No, not Bathysar Day. Hallowsar Day. That's what it was. Hoping for crepes today. Oh yeah. Why'd you have uh man? We're at that point I guess. Yeah, we're at that point. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking. Oh no, I'm <laughs> still <laughs> not super appealed by the idea of breakfast food. Oh. What? Okay, before we get into food, <laughs> um, we have a fifth grader in Minnesota who wants to know what kind of fish that was that we just saw a minute ago. So that one's a halosaurid fish. So it's kind of like, it's a non-eel, but it's an eel-like fish. Does it have a common name? Um, that is a good question. Let me check. I think it's, let me see, halosaurida. I wonder if there's any eels in Minnesota. Um, nope, it's just called halosaurus. Massive sponge on top of this rock. Whoa. Try and please. Chrysogorgid, large, polio, pogon. Oh, I piece. Are those hydroids on the sponge, like the brownish looking? No, that thing? is their um, glass um, fibers, pretty much, that allow them to attach them to the rock. Well, I think she means the ones Look protruding out. out. Oh, the one protruding yeah. out? Yeah, Where? Hercules. Trying to see where it is. It's kind of hidden right now, on like kind of like this right edge. On the left and right edge is lower of the section we're looking at now. Yeah. The boundary. Oh yeah, those are hydroids. Whoa. That is big. That's cool texture. They're so intricate. Amazing. Kupayanaha. Ay, Kupayanaha. Kupaya Kupaya Are these still like pebbles? I'm trying to figure out what yes. I'm looking at with the texture. Yes. It looks like we got a lot more current over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a pretty strong current. say something and I forgot. <laughs> about these rocks? No. Or about something else? It was, I don't think it was related to breakfast, it was something else. <laughs> but then you got distracted by breakfast. No, no, no. Then I got distracted by the sponge. Oh. Mm. It'll come to it back to me if it's important.
So these pebbles, um, how much manganese crust would we like expect to find on them? Like, would we find much? It would probably be majority crust. Crust. I mean, we haven't even, because we did do a few, um, we tried to get manganese nodules and yeah. looking at those rock fragments because they weren't nodules, it was just, the majority of it would probably just be manganese. And it's still important if, we're still gonna send it to them and they're just gonna have to work with what, what we can give them. Or they can just not, they can choose to not use it and then yeah. we'll just, we'll just hold on to them like precious golden nuggets of information. We have some viewers just still in awe of that sponge and how massive it was. And uh, those two lasers that we're seeing are 10 centimeters apart. So that can kind of help you get a sense of scale when we're looking at things down here. It's about the width of a fist. Yeah, about the width of your hand. Or just about four inches. For those using the imperial system. No, it's not used by many countries, but the one country that relies on it has been to the moon. I think it would be lovely to switch over to the metric system here in the U.S. Yeah, strangely enough, I don't know, um, maybe Tito can speak to the Navy, but when I was in the Army, it seemed like everything was metric. We just talked about how many meters, know. You know, kilometers away something was. Uh, uh, I think Hannah has take. I, I don't know. I, I like miles per hour. Used yards and miles. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, really? Yeah, because they always talk about uh, how many yards away I target think, was, 12,000 yards. It may whatever. have to do with uh, knots and yeah, the correlation. Not, knots and nautical miles are very handy. Yeah, I like those. Not sure how useful fathoms is, though. Cables. or even chains. Yeah. So back in the day when people were like surveying land in Hawaii, they used chains to measure. How long is a chain? I don't know, that's a good question. How many fathoms? Let me look it up. I've never heard chain used as a uh, form of measurement. I had a teacher for my um, ecology class measure um, things in his own height. It'd be like, oh, this is three and a half David Fields. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's a bridge at MIT that's measured based on the height of a uh, former student, I think. It's not really a standard measure, though, because people uh, aren't really an exact height. Well, I no, think he's a, like a, I think this professor from mine was like exactly six foot. Yeah, but people stoop and then they get stretched a little bit. True. I had a, I had a really stern professor for a class in my undergrad and it was a coastal engineering course and we had to design a breakwater with big rocks and I had measured the unit of weight of all my rocks in, in units of bush elephants and I got a, he got a kick out of that. It was nice. the first time anyone had seen him laugh. <laughs> wow. Well done. I still I think it's comparatively less ridiculous than measuring radiation in terms of bananas. Bananas? Yep, it's an actual thing. I've not heard that before. Because apparently the bananas have a certain amount of, give off a certain amount of radiation, so you can measure radiation in terms of bananas. And that enough of bananas in a pile can actually give you like radiation poisoning. But it takes like a huge amount of them. I wonder if there's radioactive tarantulas. I mean, we could all become Spider-Man. But they're in banana bunches, right? Maybe we should stick to the deep sea. Agreed. So once we get to waypoint nine, um, I think the intent's to kind of dance right along the edge of this ridge like to the south. Yep. Um, so that might make it a little challenging to move back over to a flat area to look for a rock. 
Um, I don't know if there's any in here that might meet your sampling needs. Um, Hannah is not with us at the moment. And I thought she had expressed a preference uh, for rocks from slopes versus flat that at is the correct. start of the watch. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this whole thing is kind of sloped, but this is a steeper slope than where I put that marker to look for one for her. Um, I think this is Mike's call. Um, I, I think, yeah, I, I think just moving along the edges are, is our best uh, spot to find the, the sort of communities that we want to see. And I think, well, um, we may want to look for a rock a little bit later on when she's back. Okay. I didn't, I didn't realize that she had a, uh, an interaction coming up. Is that a crinoid or brisingid? That is a brisingid. Oh. oh, sorry. Were you guessing? Oh, well, yeah. That got it wrong, <laughs> so it's okay. <laughs> Malia, did you find anything about chains? Like I'm like, looking it up right now. Yeah. yeah. Hold on. I see. So this is like from the 1840s when we had the um, land division called the Great Mahele, and land in Hawaii was um, divided either to Maka'inana, to the, 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 the people of the land, um, to the chiefs, and then some for the kingdom. And so there were several um, Kanaka O'ivi surveyors, one of them being my kupuna, my great-great-grandfather, who was one of the surveyors. So they would go out and uh, measure the land, but also write descriptions of the land and as we look at them now these are like rich descriptions of like the names of the water sources the type of gardens and plants that were being grown the type of forest and the elevation and so these descriptions are really important for us to understand land use in the past and um what was going on in these areas so yeah i'm looking it up and as soon as i find it i will share that See, someone in the chat, uh, it looks like they said chain, abbreviated with CH, is a unit of length equal to 66 feet or 22 yards. So I'm going to look and see if I can Wonder if that's in, uh, find out a little more. Plus. How many chains deep are we? Uh, let's see if it's in here. Okay, how about this one, Tori? Oh, yeah, I do have it. What's your depth? Uh, Brazingit? One, nine, three, zero. Mike? Sorry, what? Is that Brazingit or Crinery? 95.9. Oh, I just missed it. That was a Brazingit. Okay, there's, yeah, there's listening to other stuff going on. That doesn't sound that deep. 95 chains? Are you using meters or feet for your conversion? What about this one? I'm coming from meters. Uh, Brisingit again? meters. Yes. It's a different yeah. color morph, what? it looks like. So 2,000 meters is a little over 6,000 feet. This is 66 feet per chain. Yeah, I keep seeing 66. Let me, let me see what uh, units plus chain is. Chain one in feet. Oh, yeah, I see. 66 feet. Uh, you doing long division over there? Carry the one. No, I'm using <laughs> units plus. I'm not doing any math. I'm allergic. Are these sea cucumbers on the right or sea pens? Because I see a little bit of a shadow. Take a peek. Looks like they could be sea pens. They also could be bath bathy pathies, but I need a zoom to tell. Just might be at lighting the angle. Go for zoom. Zooming. This is a sea pen. Look at that. I was uh, quite what? lucky to get a Looks very pretty like grip. Down that's in not there. a coral? No, that's a sea pen. You can see it's going into the sediment below. So sea pens have polyps like that? Yes. Oh, okay. Sea pens are corals. Oh. 
who has very different corals. I heard you say before that sea pens, we find them not on rocks, like they're in sediment. Not technically. Not technically? Um, there are rock pens. I think Upsan, no, um, yeah, they left a rock pen drawing up here. Oh, oh so I see. They Good have the peduncle, which is this rounded part. There's, for this one, it's underneath the sediment. All right, I'm gonna pick up. All right, Moving thank you. Fast. Depth and feet is 63.32 divided by 66 is 95.9. So to confuse you a little bit more, <laughs> some of them, the surveyors, used 50-foot chains and others used a four-pole chain divided into links. So I think there was a variety of different um, me measurements. Sure. Yeah. Yes, that is more confusing. Interesting. Five. I'm wondering if a, um, I'm wondering if you, Pashna, will actually want these pens or not. Kind of six so far. Sample, you mean? Yeah, seven, eight. Better slow down if we want to do that. Yeah, why don't we slow down just in case? You want to do what? What was it? I'm asking science if they want to slow down to sample a C pen. Yes, let's slow down just in case. Yeah. Nine. Bridge nap. Wow, we're heading into harder flows. We, might we maintain see another. this line, but just slow down to 0 0.2 knots. Sebastian, we'll need to think about where to put it, though. Thank you. Yeah. Um, did we ever get 10 of that other? Yeah, site? we did. We ended up collecting it. We did, okay. Yeah, it's cool. in the forward box, but we cannot open okay. the forward box at all because both the contents are floating. Yeah, understood. Um, we could do a slurp if we wanted it, We. Uh, but there's a... Chrysogorgid pieces possibly stuck in there. Right. They told me that the slurp was non-functional. I was told oh, there's another one. If that's ten. Um, but I, we could always try flushing it. It's a flush jar. Again, let's just see if anything comes out. And that is a cushion star. Do we know what the actual problem is with the slurp? Something apparently um, is there's stuck in um, chrysogorgid fragments likely stuck somewhere in the tube. Uh, that's up to ROV if they want to give that a shot. Yeah, it's up to you guys. If not, um, we won't collect the C pen because it would be too risky to put it into the starboard box. Flush. Lounge, if um, Upashna is anywhere in sight, we may need our opinion on the sea pen soon. I'm not sure she does. She typically get up not uh, for, for breakfast. breakfast so I don't she's, think so. she's between watches now, so she's yeah. probably not going to be up. She might not be up. No, there's two more. I say we keep going because. Unless she's up and tells us that it's something we want, there's no point in stopping to collect it. Sounds good. We'll just keep mentioning that we see them, and hopefully if she does come up, she'll say Bridge something. Nav. Yeah. But we counted 10, so we'll know. Shrimp. Could we please track a line bearing 180 at 0.2 knots? Thank you. Is that a really big one on the left? Can we zoom in on that? Because it could be a coral, bamboo coral, but then again, it's in this weird like gravel spot. You're talking about this? Yeah, the long guy. It's that thing straight ahead. It's a dead sponge. sponge. Yeah, dead sponge mound. Or actually it might be alive. It might be a Dima sponge. 
just looks corally to me. I presume. Can I see the base? I think it's a coral, but I just want to double check to be sure. It's coral. Yep, thank you. There's another of the sea pens that we're counting earlier right behind it, though. That was a great zoom, too, on these rocks that we've been looking at. We've been calling them pebbles, yeah? Um, pebbles, I've been calling them gravel, but I think it's interpretive. Nuggets. I like the nuggets. I think gravel's correct, size class-wise. Yeah, there's like a fee scale that technically tells you what it's classified as. Sure. So two red shrimps. Big red shrimp. Oh, that's, that's a, a big huge one. one. Resume. Always looks like the old galley ships rowing. Wow. <laughs> wow, that's a great shot. Kupai and Naha. Kupai and Naha. I really like the little fins it has, like on its face almost. Like part of its rostrum. That are kind of sticking out on the sides. <laughs> oh, for those who don't know what a rostrum is, it's kind of like the sticky point of their. Um, Exotilt and right about past their eyes. Pointy. Yep. Pointy part. C pen. At this point, I'm ho hoping she does not want to collect these because we're seeing so many, <laughs> and now we might not miss it if she does does want it. Oh well. Early bird gets the C pen. There's a lot of sea pens. How tall do they typically grow? Like, are they use um, sea pens? Ones? Yeah. I think this is the average based on the number of you've seen. Um, the size of sea pens will vary based on the species. There's some that are very tall, and there's some that are very small. This one is kind of in the middle of the average for sea pen size, I think. Is that an urchin in the distance, I think? Pretty sure it's an yeah, urchin. You're probably right. Yeah, it's an urchin. It was that our seat pen. Alright, so we're heading about we're heading due south at the moment, 0 0.2 knots. So just let me know if you want to change where we're headed or speed. I think we can go up to 0.3 if we're not going to sample. Um, yeah. And uh, we'll do a rock once Hannah comes back. There's not really sampleable rocks here anyway. Okay. Yeah, it's just all gravel, it's not even nodules. Ridge nap. Please Fish. maintain this line bearing, but increase speed to 0 0.3. Thank you.
Derek, could you share a little bit about after we finish this dive today, um, what we mean when we say we're going to be mapping while we transit to our next dive spot? Uh, sure. Yeah, so we, um, when we switch to mapping operations, we have what's called a multi-beam sonar, which is um, a way to map the topography of the seafloor uh, from the ship. So wherever we drive, we're basically mapping beneath us uh, in a swath of about, right now, about five to six kilometers wide. We can map the terrain underneath the ship as we move along. Um, and what we'll try to do with that is either kind of overlap with other ships that have gone through running their multi-beams so we can get a more complete map that matches theirs, um, just kind of edge the two together. Or we we'll might try to aim for some features that um, show up in satellite-derived bathymetry, which is sort of like a coarse picture of what mm -hmm. seafloor features might be there. And we might try to map over those and find, to be able to like put more detail to them and find uh, things like seamounts and interesting uh, seafloor features. And then we also run a, what's called a sub-bottom sonar, and that's a, a lower frequency sonar. And the intent of that is to really look at the layers of the geology just beneath the seafloor. So that shows us some imagery of um, basically anywhere the sound speed sort of changes distinctly underneath the seafloor is, is because there's a different sort of um, rock or sediment there wow. that it refracts off of. So you can kind of take a, a look using the, s the sound um, beneath the seafloor and get some insight to the shallow geology there. I didn't realize we had that um, as well. And is that information really helpful when we're thinking about planning a dive track and figuring out like what area do we want to look at specifically? Uh, it tells us a little bit about like maybe if it shows layering, that's usually like a sediment that's going into. Um, but really we're relying primarily on the multi-beam sonar, uh, mm -hmm. looking at the topography. Underwater, it's called bathymetry. So if you hear us say bathymetry, that's the same thing as underwater topography. Um, and that's, so yeah, the multi-beam is really the primary sort of terrain mapping tool um, that makes a nice map. We can plan a dive around. And then um, we can also look at backscatter, which is the intensity of the um, any individual sounding we get off the seafloor. You can measure how strong that echo was. Mm -hmm. And so you tend to get stronger echo off of uh, harder seafloor um, like rock, whereas you might get a, a, a quieter echo from um, like a mud. So that tells us the relative hardness of the area. Um, so just depending on what we want to look for in terms of uh, the, the uh, geological or biological uh, objectives of the dive, you might choose hard or soft substrates to aim for. That makes sense. Do you have any advice for, like, if we have anyone that's listening that's interested in, like, the mapping or navigator role, like, where can people start with a career? Um, well, it depends, I guess, where you are in your studies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you're in um, high school and you want to work in this and maybe pursue something in geography or mapping or ocean engineering, um, yeah, like, the math and science courses are going to be the things to focus on at that level and just get like a robust basis of understanding of the sciences. Um, and then um, in college, like sort of a good understanding of uh, physics and um, marine science, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's not a lot of sort of undergraduate level training focused uh, on mapping specifically, uh, with some exceptions. I know that the College of Charleston's had a very strong undergraduate um, options in learning about ocean mapping. That's the only one I could think of, their BEAMS program. Yeah. That's it. So that was started by Dr. Leslie Sauter. Um, and uh, yeah, we've had, we definitely have some interns in mapping and navigation out on the exploration vessels who've come out of that program. And then, um, more at the graduate level, like sort of masters or even a PhD, um, trainings are available at the University of New Hampshire's Center for Coastal Ocean Mapping. Uh, the University of Mississippi has a good program as well. Um, and 
There's a good program now, um, Comet down in Florida, um, that I think Catalina could speak to um, mm -hmm. when she's on watch. So, yeah, some good are options. You, are you arriving at our ocean engineering program? Not specifically tailored to mapping, but everyone kind of gets, so, uh, uh, there's like two or three classes, acoustics, and we, we do some lab experiments with side scan sonar. And so you get like a good, a good base of understanding of a lot of different concepts in ocean engineering. Absolutely. But there, yeah. isn't, really, there isn't really anything tailored, to, at least at the undergraduate level, to mapping. Yeah. So GIS is a really good skill to have too, which is geographic information systems. Um, that's basically software um, applications that combine mapping um, spatial data with linked to databases so that you, you can track information about ge uh, geography really uh, in a detailed way using maps and databases together. So it's very powerful sort of spatial analysis. It's very multidisciplinary too. Um, I use it, and I've used seen several GIS classes just across social sciences, geosciences, life sciences, as so many um, applications. Definitely, yeah. It's a really powerful way too to ask scientific questions using spatial relationships. Um, that you know, it's a, uh, which is a different way of kind of looking at. Uh, questions about the world so right. yeah whether it's like whether there's like a demographic question like where do I put where would someone put the next uh, 7-eleven <laughs> that would be close to a major highway and close to the consumer base that would use it stuff like that you can do sort of analysis like that you could do a lot of natural resource um, questions lend themselves really well to GIS like trying to understand like the behavior of fire for instance um, you'd want to understand like the topography, the winds, the vegetation, mm -hmm. um, the moisture content on different places. So there's a lot of like ways to use GIS to kind of an analyze things that happen in the world as real processes that are sort of spatially um, dependent. Um, yeah, so we use a lot of GIS in mapping. But yeah, anything kind of like engineering, science, math is going to set you up for having a really good understanding of how to, you know, develop those skills. I should I should also mention that like career-wise, a lot of people aren't aware of NOAA, like in terms of the NOAA Core. That's C O R P S. So it's um, they're basically the part of NOAA that's running um, the ships, the fleet, uh, and also their aircraft. Um, so it's a really neat for someone who's interested in science and, and loves field work and wants to go out. Is that different from the corpse? The, the NOAA it's corpse? the same. How you same. pronounce it? Yeah, core. It's actually one of the seven branches of the military. Right? Yeah, it's know. like the smallest one. Yep. So it's a military kind of structure um, in terms of ranks, things like that, and how you sort of work your way up. Um, but it's really, they have some interesting work in the field. So if you want to get out on a ship and gain experience in mapping, um, uh, NOAA's Office of Coast Survey is the the part of the agency that um, goes out and gathers ocean mapping data to inform uh, nautical charts. So making sure that we safely can navigate sort of the shallower parts of the ocean along coastlines and harbors. Um, so that's definitely if you're into mapping and and science and uh, ocean mapping specifically, that's a really great way to gain field experience. You actually have to apply to be in NOAA Corps. I think they only have um, 100 candidates a year, if I remember wow. correctly. Yep. So always looking for new talent there. Um, yeah, and then of course in the private sector, there's um, opportunities for um, shallow water surveying. Um, there's often private companies that get contracts to do things like survey a harbor before a dredging project happens and then as it's going on they'll survey it to see how much material is being moved by the company with the contract and um, offshore wind farms yeah offshore wind farms is a huge growing sector right now mm -hmm. that needs people to understand how to go out and do surveys to you know assess the topography do environmental assessments of the the area um, and then once, the, if there is a wind farm built, like, uh, you know, there's constant monitoring of the infrastructure there and any potential, um, you know, 
uh, there's just, just oh, there's all sorts of field work that needs to be done associated with those installations. Oh, oh and we should mention ops. cable laying too. That's, that's a big industry in the, the subsea, like how to lay uh, fiber optics for uh, communications cables um, that cross ocean basins. Dredging of ports and harbors. Yeah. Not a sort of Uh, yeah, uh, and then uh, I should mention that, you know, we, we do have uh, opportunities with Nautilus to mm -hmm. do, um, to come out and gain experience on our cruises as uh, a mapper or a navigator, depending on the cruise. Sometimes you do both, like this cruise. Um, Normally, if it's someone's first time, um, will they come out on a mapping-specific leg to get experience, or... Uh, that's often the case because that's where we have sort of the, the room on, sh on board <laughs> mm -hmm. to take on a, a larger group of um, sort of early career folks and um, we usually pair like the, a mapping intern with uh, sort of an experienced watch lead so they'll be sitting with someone the whole time who's very knowledgeable in our sonars and how to use the software and uh, how to you know, process the data and so you really dive right in and get get a lot of hands-on experience um, with the, the whole field um, so we also have some that come out from uh, the Coast Guard Academy and occasionally the US Naval Academy absolutely yeah so we have close partnerships with a lot of groups that need or want field experience my first internship was in GIS uh, small town public water utility, mapping out all the water infrastructure. Cool, yeah. It was a great experience. So did you go around with a GPS and, yep. and uh, yep. be like, okay, this is where this this drain is, or this, uh -huh. you know. Uh, I, uh, that sounds kind of Thousands fun. of homes in the town. I knew all the streets by the end of the <laughs> yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did a project like that once. I was assessing all the culverts or bridges in my hometown and uh, I was walking pretty much all the stream networks and seeing where they interacted with the road network and then building a GIS with information yeah. about each one of those crossings, primarily for like fish passage and how, how well it could handle flood events and things like that. It was a very good experience for also talking to people because I would show up to people's houses and be, be you know, measuring things and occasionally have to dig with a shovel and <laughs> I didn't have to tell them about it because it was three feet from the street but I'd still be on their yard and so people would come out and ask all sorts of questions <laughs> it's a very it's a great experience Derek what uh what was your hometown uh, that was in Durham New Hampshire oh yeah okay yeah cool hopefully that work was in the summer it it was yeah <laughs> you just have to watch out there's poison ivy everywhere yeah. after roadside. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah I bet I was wearing like uh basically like thigh high like fishing uh, oh yeah that's waders smart. yeah just like poison ivy is a, a uh, real issue in, in yeah. new england it's everywhere we um my first archaeology job in college was uh doing shovel tests in connecticut and uh yeah we would just every single time the the pi would be like oh we need to dig and he would measure somewhere it'd be like the middle of a patch of poison ivy and we we're just like are you serious because not only uh, where we standing in it, we were putting a shovel into it and then screening that dirt. Of course, there's roots everywhere. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it was, that stuff is really vile. It's tough. Ticks and poison ivy, yeah. It's yeah, a those, hazard of yeah. where we live. Seriously. Back and, like, back. ticks are, like, a legit uh, health threat. Like, mm -hmm. poison ivy you'll get over, but... Ticks can really, yeah. yeah. Lyme disease, not it's so easy. not a joke, yeah. This stuff's awful. So yeah, anybody, anyone who's working outside, please be vigilant and careful with stuff. Well, dog owners, I think, are uh, yeah. highly at risk. We've seen some really purple sea cucumbers. Yeah, the last one was really, really colorful. 
What can you do? Like, I've always heard to, like, wear a hat if you're outside under, like, trees to help you. Yeah. Like, stay away from ticks. Like, what else? Oh, oh ticks? Avoid the tall grass. Yeah. Hats? Yeah, yeah. you, yeah, you want to search your body. <laughs> yeah, long pants. Uh, D sometimes works if you want to put that on your clothes. Permeth permethrin. Um, uh, it, it impregnating. Or, like, um, treat... Sorry, treat your clothes with permethrin can help. Um, but, yeah, just... Um, shower as quickly as you can afterward, after field work, and just do a full body check. Um, it's you know the big ones are kind of easy, are pretty easy to find. It's the little ones that are the the deer, uh, ticks. The oh. deer ticks have the uh, Lyme disease, and I think they have a few other things now. Um, so you really just want to be very careful if if a freckle isn't familiar or is mm. move <laughs> certainly if it's moving, uh, you, you want to get that off. Yeah. Moving uh, freckles. Good, yeah. Good telltale sign. Yeah. If you, if you can, if you can pick it up. Feet. Yeah. So. Um, or for Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. I have to say, it's the nice thing about it being on the ship is you don't have to worry about uh, mosquitoes. Or ticks yeah. Or <laughs> it's it's some of the uh, nicer field work in that regard. <laughs> you, we have to deal with some sunburn sometimes, seasickness sometimes, but uh, typically not <laughs> not ticks. <laughs> Or bloodborne pathogens, <laughs> like Lyme disease. That would be tough if there were ticks out at sea. Oh yeah, it'd be awful. <laughs> is this another halosaur? Yes, it is. It's a beautiful one. Halosaur. If we see one with a transparent skull, it's a different species, though. All right, Clearly. Anna is back. It's interesting back uh, markings on its back. Yes, I'm back. Welcome back. Uh, we, we were in a, like a gravel field for most of the time you were gone, but now... I saw. Yeah, with an endless amount of sea But pants. now we can pick a rock. Now we can pick a rock. rock uh, Dare, can we make the ship be a little bit more... Are, are we going to point three? We want to... We are going to want to get a rock at some point. We're just heading just really due south right now along this kind of edge. Um, but anywhere you want to just kind of stop, we can just call an all stop and look for a rock. Um... I think I think we're in a good place for that. Yeah, Hannah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so we can do that. Thanks. Bridge now. Um, I'm looking over here. All stop, please. I'll set down right here. Well, if you get a closer look, and I don't think it looks good. I'm looking at this. This well, guy. That's like, that looks like a good one. Yeah. It doesn't even look attached. No. I say no. <laughs> I just jinxed it. Sorry. Did you see the Chana cops? Trust her. <laughs> yeah. No, I haven't. You I mean the Tina cops? Oh, yeah. It, it was. We were. Uh, we saw one. It, it swam away, but. Mm. All right. So the one you circled so looks that's good. That's cute, though. Yeah. It swims with, like its whole body. Back row. Yeah. What's Sorry. that? The one you circled looks good? Yes. yes. Alright. Thank you. We were distracted. I was telling her we saw a ton of cops. So I did check in with Daniel Wagner on uh, the possibility of extending the dive or not. And his guidance was to just stick with the, the schedule. Okay. Um, so yeah, the... Yeah, we'll just, we'll just make as much progress south as we can. And Where is this sample going to go? Right this around. is going in starboard C or D. So we yeah. want uh, starboard off, bucket on. Oh, we got it. Thank you. Yeah, Derek, that makes sense. Um, I know that we're kind of doing the math now to be, you know, to when we need to be back in Hawaii and back calculating transit and dives and all that. So that makes sense. Yep. Okay, we're back in like a week or so, I think. Yeah. Don't talk about it. It makes me sad. <laughs> I remember that part of expedition leading when you're like, you're, you're getting, you know, into the, the latter part. You're like, oh, I need to start planning, you know, time hour by yeah. hour. Yeah. Hour to, yeah, literally like down to the half hour. You're like, oh. Do we know how many dives for sure are left? Two. Two more. One. Okay. <gasps> That's so sad. They're long dives. They're like 24 hours plus. So. Only two? Huh? Just two more? Yep. Uh, That's do we know I'm, where yet? Nope. Um, yeah, they said uh, 
yesterday that there were three more, so this would be the first of those three. Okay. Sad. That is sad. Oh, I think you may be muted. Yeah, this expedition has been amazing. Just like all the different people and their expertise and really amazing. Kupaya Naha. Kupaya Naha. I might have to try resetting the controller. The craft. Yeah, I got it. it as well. Yeah. Sorry, just troubleshooting. Powering it down Power now. That word's really become like a mantra it's for off. our, uh, our watch. I know. <laughs> I think I'm going to make a gallery. <laughs> Based on all the things we've seen and said that. Parent frame is on. I'm looking at this rock and I, I'm falling more in love with it every second. <laughs> I've shut off auto heading. Okay. I think I'm going to give you a yank. I'm glad we got to see a China cop swimming. I didn't see that last time. Well, I guess I did. So, <laughs> trade off. Was it what you what you were expecting? I've seen videos before. I just hadn't seen it like on our Live. watch. Yeah. And it's. It's an interesting little swim. There it goes. Please. Please. <laughs> yeah. It moved. Awesome. Success. That's going in the front basket. No. I think no. it's going no. starboard. Starboard oh, C or D. Good. Good on camera. The do the not out. open the front basket, no matter what you do. <laughs> Where's it going? Uh, uh, starboard bio. Starboard, starboard bio. Uh, so how does this look? This rock. It looks perfect. And get Beautiful. lights on it, lasers on it when you get a chance. Okay. So about 15 centimeters across, longest lines. Yeah. Thank you. Beautiful Kohaku. Kohaku, thank you. Go on the sample. Which is the open one? Sorry, I was uh, uh, C or D. Some other thing. Charlie or Delta? Mm -hmm. All right, sample collected. Thank you, Charlie. Charlie, see. Okay, thank you. The sample 101. Go back, back to dive. To, um, dive. That take? Yeah, there it goes. Alright. I'll stow the arm after. Pull wide. Alright, when you guys are ready, we can go back to like a 0.3 knot transit yeah, south. Yeah, as soon as we get back under the vehicles, I'm happy. Uh, just gonna put it back down, I think. We quite a bit of swing because we're moving pretty fast. So, yeah. what did you say, Mike? Uh, when you guys are ready, we can go back to a point three knot uh, transit south. Copy.
Okay, no, so it sounds like there may be a lot of rock o'clock on deck, like on our transit back. Or Probably. still a lot of rocks that need to be cut. Well, we finished cutting all of them. Oh. So you guys are, you guys are keeping up then. Well, we have to do petrological descriptions. Ah, mm, uh, that's what you'll be doing. It's not that bad. Uh, right now <laughs> we're not moving, but it will be 180 degrees. Thank you. Yep. And by petrological uh, descriptions, I mean describing the minerals that we see in the rock. What shape they are, if we see any alteration, which is mostly a lot. <laughs> and what percentage of the rock do we think the mineral makes up? How thick the manganese crust is. If the crust has texture on it. Whoop, where did we put that sample? C. C. Charlie. What was the number of the sample? 101. It looks really pretty outside. Oh, it always looks so pretty. We're just so lucky. Mm. <laughs> Daniel thinks that we're gonna feel the wrath of the Pacific on our way back. Oh, I hope not. I said, please no, please. I hope not. We are following the sea all the way up here. We were lucky there. Got several Chrysler Gorges. We're back in the box. All right. Looks like a primnoid and a bamboo. Can you please track a line bearing 180 at 0 0.3 knots? Thank you. Micralium and paragorgid. Some dead sponges. Looks like there could be a round Bolosomid on that ulterior sponge on the left. Tiny fish. Eel something. Oh, I see it. Little oh, fish? It's like right. tiny. Gone. It's gone? A lot of Dutch dead sponges over here. Yeah. Uh, were you pointing to the sea cucumber? Yeah, a little purple guy.
I wonder if this sponge will eventually die. Like the rest One of day. Them. One day. Eventually. Eventually. Yeah. Pretty much guaranteed. I guess. <laughs> Pretty no much guaranteed. matter when and how. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Everything dies. Except for that immortal jellyfish. <laughs> immortal jellyfish. Can I get a zoom on one of these red corals? I just want to make sure they are what I think they are. The interesting thing is between Hemicorallium and Paragorgid is... This one? Or the yes, one please. Right. Looks like they're all the same species. So I don't need to see close up on one. Over here. Yes, paragorgids. So we're, for common name being bubblegum coral because they look like chewed pieces of bubblegum. Like you might see on a wall. Or in your hair. I remember <laughs> as a kid I used to get bubblegum stuck in my hair because I go to bed with it. Um, it's awful <laughs> trying to get it out of your hair. <laughs> Have you guys seen the gum wall in Seattle? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's that, fun. That was certainly a scary place to be during the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> also, welcome back, Scott. This is... Fat an urchin? Maybe an enemy. Pretty sure it's an enemy if you, if you zoom in. I presume? Yes, an enemy or a single polyped coral. I think Scott could make a better ID. Yep, two with enemy. Syrianthid tubinemi. What do they eat? They're filter feeders and um, sediment feeders, depending mm -hmm. on the species. Um, I think this guy is primarily a filter feeder, but he may be at an angle where he can like reach the sediment a little bit. So, do they use their arms to to gather like the plankton, or yes? And so they have a mouth. Yep, it's right in the middle. Mm. And what's the difference between arms and tentacles? Um, that is a good question. Um, from my understanding, arms are you have more flexibility control. Usually, think like octopuses. Mm -hmm. 
um, while tentacles have a little bit less control, usually they're thinner, and in most cases, tentacles are longer, and for cnidarians, they have stinging cells. Mm. And how could you tell the male from the female? For an enemy? Yeah. I think like most of them are hermaphroditic. Oh, I'm sorry, that's your male. Um, Scott's opinion is that an arm has bones in it, but I'm not sure if that applies to octopuses, though. But yeah, he's, yeah, he says, good point on octopuses. They are called arms to have bones. So I'd say it's the ability to grasp and maneuver them more easily. Yeah, because I've heard both used, and so I just wasn't sure what the differences were. But again, the squids have tentacles that they can maneuver, so the cuttlefish with pretty high precision, but it's kind of like, a, I think it's like per species description. Mm -hmm. A pile of dead Walteria sponges there. Maybe the current got cut off after this rock fell here. Yeah, they could have. It looks like they could have. I can see that. Chrysogorgids, and can I get a zoom on this fan, please? Oh, no. Looks like it could be a primnoid, but it could also be a bamboo. Over zoom? Over zoom. Yes, primnoid. Also, um, Scott notes for invertebrates would have tentacles or appendages, but arms is used in some cases. And appendages for all the legs for any arthropods, arthropods, so crabs, shrimp, etc. Mm -hmm. Mahalo. Of course. Is the yellow part of that coral um, a crinoid? Yes, it is. Yes, Tori. <laughs> From the expert herself. Brazingids are still difficult. I agree. Mm -hmm. And I can recognize a bubble gum coral if the polyps are closed. When they're open, I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm still confused on Paragorgia versus Primnoid. Um, those ones are pretty so apparent. Had a good meal. Um, primnoids yeah. are kind of like, when they come out, they're more straight okay. arms. Coral buffet. Um, uh, Paragorgia look like the bubble gum. Uh, but Hemichorallium versus Paragorgia is much tougher debate. So, like, see the one in the back right there? That's a Paragorgia. Yeah. Okay, yes. <laughs> Not Paragorgia, primnoid, sorry. <laughs> that doesn't help. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I accidentally say things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then the top one right there, that one could be a Paragorgia or a Hemichorallium, but we'd have to zoom in to tell. So I just say Corallid. That's so funny that you confused yourself a Paragorgia. Well, I didn't confuse myself, I just actually said the wrong word. Yeah. Is, there a, is there a decision tree kind of simplified guide for Oh, no, there isn't. I asked. <laughs> They're like, no, it does not exist. That would be too easy. And see, that one for sure is a Paragorgia. The pink one? They're all pink. The bright pink one? Well, the obviously bright pink one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then there looks like to be a bolosomid sponge somehow there in the mix. No, is it a bolosomid? No, that's a colophycus sponge. Ficus. It's a funny word.
Reminds me of cauliflower. Yeah. Go for Zoom. A uh, nice hint for you from um, Scott, um, Hannah, is that um, most corallids have the polyps facing one on one side of the band. I don't know where coral it is. So, <laughs> so the pink guys like these okay. usually. Well, this is a, yeah, this is Paragorgia, but all the polyps are kind of one-sided. And then there's a churro squat squat lobster on the, on the whip, which looks different from the normal squat lobsters. If I mean, got it where nothing in this shot is in focus. <laughs> too much to focus on. Okay. I just have to cheat and look at my focusing monitor. I think there's another one inside the polyps right there. This is a fun little area. So much going on. Got a lot of little samples to look at. It's a smorgasbord mm -hmm. of corals. I have never heard someone say smorgasbord. You haven't? What? In normal chatting? I use it regularly. Oh, yeah. That's, <laughs> <use> it regularly. <laughs> That's wild. How about cornucopia? Our chat's also not normal, I would say. <laughs> this is so funny. That was, I mean, it, it was, obviously it was used correctly, but I just wasn't expecting right. it. Coming, Coming out. I use it regularly. Yeah. It's set up over here too. This is kind of the word before buffet yeah. came along, yeah? yeah. Smorgasbord. A smorgasbord. <laughs> That's German. I don't really even know how to spell that. S M smorgasbord. Is that German? Uh, I believe so. Nordic. Nordic? Let's yeah, I think so. Let's Somebody look it up. You I spell am. It? Swiss? Danish? <laughs> Norwegian? <laughs> I was close. Smorgasbord. I can spell smorgasbord, but not um, Tronikov. Swedish origin. Oh, oh cool. Swedish. Became internationally known at the 1939 New York World's Fair. <laughs> I remember it well. <laughs> Just beating Rennie to the punch. <laughs> oh, uh, I actually like it. I actually like it. It's a Swedish word that roughly translates as a table of open sandwiches or buttered bread. Oh, is that <laughs> a stocked crying right there? That is beautiful. Buttered bread. It just flew over it. It's yeah, the board. yellow. I like it. Oh my gosh, next time you go to a restaurant and they bring, ask for the smorgasbord. <laughs> yes, it butter. is a stocked crying. No, it's not a stocked crying. It's a crying out on a bamboo. It's a crying like It's a crying out on a stock. It's not a stocked yeah. crying out. Crying out on a stock. Crying out on a stock. Aye. The only stock crying out we've seen is on this dive from an earlier shift, and it was already damaged, so we get to see an intact one, I think. Looks like the watch change is coming in. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yay. Here that was come. a fun one. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. Breakfast, Welcome. here I come. <laughs> <laughs> so then meet meet you yeah, she's gone. Breakfast, here Sebastian comes. <laughs> All right. Video's doing watch change over here. Cheers. My heart. Oh, wow. Can we get one last zoom on this before I go? Ed, uh, video's doing watch change, so I'll just sit down here and we can wait. Good morning. Uh, what is this? You can't wait to your seven. Hi. Do you think this is a... It doesn't look like a... Those are bamboo stripes on. I love it. Yeah, it's bamboo. Okay. Okay, so aloha, ahui ho. Uh, take care as we do our shift change.
All right, the 12 watch is swooping in to uh, handle the end of this dive. So good morning to all of our viewers. Good morning, aloha ka kahiaka. Mm -hmm. Aloha ka kahiaka kako. It's great to be here on the 8 to 12 watch, the greatest watch the world has ever known. <laughs> We're back in the control van, bringing the deep sea live to you at home, in the office, at school, all around the world. You're welcome. <laughs> it's time. Just taking in this beautiful view right here. This is amazing. Are you still moving? No, we are not moving right now. And I'm talking about the control van, not those corals. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful view. What a team. Yeah, it is, it is beautiful to come into the van and see a, see some of these beautiful Ritagorgia and bamboo corals. And Indeed. Just. So in terms of a game plan, since we kind of have very little time, do we want to just kind of continue tracking the line along and see cover as much ground as we can kind of thing? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Yeah, we have to be off bottom in about an hour uh, with an expected on deck time, uh, 11 a.m. Honolulu time. Wow. So that's about three hours out from now. And then we will uh, start our transit to our uh, next dive site. which is in Nolens. <laughs> <laughs> We're going for breakfast at Cafe du Monde. Beignets. Dive, diving into beignets. <laughs> diving into the Deep food dive. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> too, no, soon. It's okay. too soon. It's too soon. <laughs> well, yeah, well, watch sort of already started in the, in, uh, in the galley. That's right. <laughs> A little yeah. bit before watch. <laughs> It's so funny. I was just talking to Malia, and she was like, we always end up talking about food towards the end. <laughs> and then our stomachs just grumble, and we get so hungry. And I was like, we're not the only ones. We start at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. We start at the beginning. <laughs> Mahina has to go get his snacks. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so funny. No, oh, we are hilarious. Thanks for agreeing, Internet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. When the internet agrees with you, sometimes that's not always that's a good not thing. A good thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, filter bubbles. Hundred percent joy gain. <laughs> that's a lot of gain. It's a lot of gain. <laughs> it's you know everybody changes things around. So when you come in and sit down, it's like well, it's just like jumping in somebody else's car, right? Right. Mm. The mirrors are all messed up, and the, <laughs> <laughs> the transmission does something different. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That tiny fish, right there. We uh, appreciate those of you online telling us where to go, but uh, we'll uh, we'll make sure we. You gotta undo we, the ring. Uh, we take care of that ourselves. Yeah. Got a great navigator. Got a great ROV you pilot. Be gentle with it. Oh, there's wires in here. Amazing that ship captain. Yeah, very delicate. And trying to put this back together again. It's like Humpty Dumpty. Oh no. I don't do We are at about one thousand eight hundred and fifty meters. And uh, on the Gambia Shoal, uh, just to the southeast, if I remember correctly, about 20 miles southeast of Koiheleni or Midway Atoll, halfway between North America and Japan. And um, yeah, this has uh, been another spectacular dive, another gift from Kanaloa, revealing mm -hmm. a new side of his face and.
character and features and uh, every dive has been so unique it really has uh, been. been pretty amazing yeah, and we are, uh, yeah, just a little bit southwest of the uh, Liliakalani oh, yeah, seamounts. Really fish here. Can you zoom in, Amber? Good eye, Kukui. Thank you. It's got the tail of a halosaur. Oh, JK. <coughs> I was going to say it's an African. Oh, yeah, it's a nice halosaur. Palosaurs are some of my favorite fish. They're they so are easy. pretty cool. Yeah, they're very easily recognizable when you're coming from above, too, because of that tail. Uh, which okay. is just so, such a kindness when you're, you know, in your fourth <laughs> hour of annotating, of the fourth day of the week, of your fourth month annotating, and you're just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> annotating for days. Annotating for months. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah. I mean, there's grad, the grad student life, baby. Annotate. You too can annotate for months. <laughs> <laughs> or years if it's if you're uh, assigned to the hemichorellium dive. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, that one's gonna have to be AI. <laughs> A bat batch annotations. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Although I bet I could do it. Don't don't volunteer yourself for that. For the AI. Ah. It'd, be, it'd be a great Ooh. opportunity to like learn how to do that. As an yeah. AI annotator. Yeah. What's that behind it? Well, what is that behind? What would fish? be? Oh, that's um um a uh, sponge. Yes. Oh. Yeah, forayed sponge um skeleton. Wow. Mm -hmm. They create these wild-looking large sponges mm -hmm. um, that really do remind me of like vertebra, and then like mm -hmm. if you put sponge overlapping ribs. It's really kind of creepy when you think about it that way, but um, it's, oh, it's really cool. Well, oh, that's appropriate. We are coming yeah. up on spooky season. Ooh, yes. Yeah, that's what I thought, I, was. I thought it was a vertebrae or something. I was like looking at it and I was like, that looks like... <laughs> <laughs> no, there's just some wild... Oh, giant coral alert. They yeah, very large this is bamboo. beautiful. We got some... Oh. Only because I can see it in the still oh, you cam. Can't really I got get a view still <laughs> cam. But there's an Aritagorgia. We've got some bamboo. We've got two different morph types of bamboos. We've got Chrysoporgias. Um, potentially, um, maybe even a Metallogorgia. But it's hard to tell from this angle. All sorts of little yeah. Chrysoporgias just lining the edge of that rock. Yeah, I forget. There's, um, there's some small circular ones. I think they're like... Arborea, Salata, or there's an F1. So there's a couple different um, <coughs> species that those little puff balls could be, but um, you know they're I think uh, they're all Chrysogorgias, so that's nice. The the firecracker ones that are true spirals, those are Aritagorgia. That's a different mm -hmm. genus. So yeah, got a few things going on here. It looks like there's yeah. a there's Scott said there's a branching pimnoid on the right. Oh, and yeah. Looks like a small unbranching pimnoid on the left side of that um, Crescorgia tuft. Oh, that's for maybe as much. Yeah. That might be it. This is amazing. That's how we do it on 8 to 12. Just jump right in and <laughs> out springs the life. Beautiful. This is amazing. Yeah. When we get a chance, we'll, we should zoom in on these to make sure that they are the branching pattern that we... Um, what is it? What are we zooming in? Uh, is it um, the, the bamboo would be best if we could zoom in around like here, and then we could get the two for one of zooming in on this bamboo and the coral behind it. Would be kind of cool, <coughs> if possible. But if not, um, you know, we for the... Yeah, we, yeah. Can, we can do anything we need to do. All right, so we've got a, looks like a nodal branching bamboo that's three-dimensional in front and a, maybe internodal branching bamboo that's planar in the back. I, can, I got a little more zoom. Oh, okay. Yes. yes, yes, video engineer. Thank Look you. Full zoom. 
Awesome. Yeah, oh, actually, everybody. I'm changing. I think it is nodal, nodal branch in the background, the planar one. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, um, that yeah. zoom. This That's price gorges look amazing, too. That's excellent. <clears throat> yep, Scott identifies a metallogorgia, the rock on the right, uh, mm -hmm. we're zoomed out, and then Chrysogorgia underneath the uh, rocks, according to the Saco. So nice. Yeah, we yeah. have uh, two talented biologists joining us in uh, the uh, scientist uh, ashore chat. So, we're happy to have them. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Mahalo, yes. Scott, and Asako. Mahalo, Nui. Mahalo to all of our support scientists ashore. We couldn't do it without you guys. Yeah, we really couldn't. Yeah, we have these these smaller uh, Christ gorges just everywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they what are quite right? numerous. We've That's got cool a couple different um, types here as well. I think it's just a old fat, old fat. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, the white is yeah, old fast. Like an old, 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 oh, yeah. old, old fast. Oh, just a giant like hold fast. Ho hum. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cool. I uh, no, I agree. I'm 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 just being goofy. <clears throat> oh good. Well, that's good. Yeah. No, that, it's it's a uh, it's a pretty big hold fast. That was probably a monster coral at some point. What is that yellow thing? Do you think that might be a black coral, maybe? Uh, could be. Zoom in. Could we zoom? Bon dia to our uh, students tuning in from school in Brazil. Thanks Ooh. for reaching out in the chat. We love having our Brazilian explorers on board with us. So thank you very wow. much. Beautiful yeah. nice spot. It's a gorgeous color. Golden, mm -hmm. golden honey turmeric. Is, this, yeah. is that a black coral? Though? Yes, that is a black coral. Mm -hmm. It looks similar to one of the ones that we um, took a sample of previously with uh, the okay. kind of weird branching pattern. It looks like there's some sort of anemone and hydroid underneath too. Yeah, I've so. seen that too. Yeah, that's exciting. <coughs> Yeah, we've got um, Asako and Scott both think that it could be a uh, uh, Staropathies, um, mm -hmm. which is kind of what I think that's what um, I think that's what we labeled the last one too, Staropathies question mark. That's, that yeah. sounds right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. I remember that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Exciting. It's always great to see somewhat slightly different things. Yeah, and there's always tons of them. Around, you know this uh, this right here is looking. That is interesting. What wow. is that? Oh, cool. it's looking. Wow. Uh, are. Wow. Mm. As uh, fairly large polyps, right? Oh, there's I, some. No, it's some. It's something colonized. I think it's zoanthids. I think it's zoanthids colonizing an Afraid yeah. skeleton. Yeah. And a chrysogorgid uh, next door. There's a chrysogorgid on the bottom. Yeah. Soliniferous octocoral overgrowing a sponge. Wow. Cool. Nice. <laughs> Zoom in. Yes, Looks please. like a crime scene to me. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. A mat like octocoral. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, Scott. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, look, look at the You can actually look at the see that it's creating. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, the, we yeah, the really white is, I believe, the. Part of that stolen mat that they're creating. Wow. Yeah. Those are beautiful. And instead of a, uh, a more linear right. sort of feature, over here it's just like covering the whole core, uh, skeleton. Sorry. Right. We've seen these before on rocks, and actually we've collected some on rocks. Wow. It's actually even connecting through the back. Yeah. Um, and so the there's tissue that will connect these white polyps because each of these polyps is actually distinct. Um, and so here, when you see them on a rock, it's pretty pretty distinct because there's just lines of these polyps. But like it's, it's so interesting here. Yeah, they're over one of those um, skeleton, like sponge sponges. This is this is pretty unique. Wow. This is wild. It's yeah. So Thank you so much um, for this beautiful zoom. The um, this is amazing. Thank the camera for that. 
<laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> Amazing. This camera and camera operator. This is, a, yeah. this is an old camera, but it's... It's so a good one. One of the best. Yeah. All these but goodies. Yeah, Scott's noting uh, how, how uh, you know, unique uh, uh, growths like this can uh, make IDs confusing. And it, yes. it certainly did for us for uh, for a moment there. Oh, absolutely. I was yeah. like, this Until we got close enough, everybody was like, bizarre. oh, we get it. Yeah. So, yeah, these, these zooms uh, uh, really help us make these identifications, so. Wow, and those polyps are just so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Asako agrees with you. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, thank you so much. While we move along here, uh, I think the world would love to know who they're listening to. This amazing crew and the greatest watch ever. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, mm -hmm. let's share let's share who we are and and maybe um, think about where you'd take Nautilus. If you were in charge, if you were the captain, we've got a lot of internet uh, backseat drivers uh, on, <laughs> on, on, in the chat. If you were the captain, where would you take Nautilus? Where would you go? Uh, and uh, I'll start while I give my colleagues a chance to think about it. And uh, my name is Daniel Kinzer. I'm science communication fellow. It's blink. It's blink. Call uh, Honolulu on the island of Oahu home. And um, where would I take Nautilus? Oh, mm. I would take. I would take Nautilus to visit my new friends in Brazil and see the girl from Ipanema. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, head down to Rio or Sao Paulo. Where are you guys? Let us know, friends in Brazil, friends on the internet. Uh, send, put it in the chat. Where would you take Nautilus? And to all my colleagues in the control van. Oh, yeah. Sea spider. Sea spider. Another one. And something here. I don't Yo, know what that is. Yeah, it looks like a <laughs> oh, I wonder if that's one of those little um, arthropods, the poly 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 kelly's. Are, well, okay. It's like, uh, we zoom on first. And now this is me being like doing exactly what I get. But no, it's got yeah, that very distinct right. shape. Oh, it's slippery yeah, lobster. Yeah. yeah, the slippery lobster. Yeah, it's just it's just slipper got such lobster. a distinct shape that I think I am like so no, 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 cool. I can do that. Cute little guy. Those are, those are so wild. There are so many places I would take Nautilus. Yeah, well, tell us, Val. Oh, my gosh. Where do I start? <laughs> yes. You can do multiple. You can do a multi-stop uh, uh -huh. mm. expedition. This picnic on it's coming for us. Uh, I would love to go to a... Uh, I, I don't know. I would I would love to go to the Line Islands region. Oh, I'm, I'm already yeah. going there so probably the next year on another ship, though. But uh, uh, there, there are a couple <laughs> places that aren't the Line Islands that are close to the Line Islands that I would go. A um, place in the uh, Marshall Islands area called, uh, at least uh, in the literature, uh, Anewatak. Anewatak. It's a mm. cluster of islands whose origins I can't tell uh, what they are based on uh, modeling. Because they're they're kind of in an interesting place, um, relative to where we think some hotspot tracks might go. Um, no matter where Val goes, she's going to go to continue puzzling, putting yes. this earth-making story <laughs> together. There's no stopping her. She's uh, uh, doing an amazing job helping I'd us figure that out here, and would would do it all over the world's oceans. I would really love to. Uh, go down to some of the uh, uh, far southern uh, hotspot tracks uh, where you, it, the, the Pacific kind of stops being this Pacific and kind of starts being the Antarctic, but uh, yeah. uh, ocean. But uh, I also know that seas are quite rough there, so uh, <laughs> it's, it's not exactly the uh, ideal place to go for um, um, for humans who get seasick. <laughs> yeah, but or, I would love to give it a try. That are, or ropes. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. That that would probably have to be a uh, dredging cruise with the uh, with a uh, permit for the cable. Yeah, or just to have Robert take you down in Alvin. And, there you uh, go. Well, Alvin has weather restrictions too. Oh. Yeah, I bet it does. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. All right. So that's uh, that's Dr. Val Finlayson, our amazing watch lead. Uh, who would uh, take it down to the Lion Islands or, or the Marshalls or the Southern Ocean or all three? 
Yeah, all yeah, three if I all could. All three. All three. That sounds <laughs> like some, a good idea. Some expedition. of the more underexplored parts of the ocean, and uh, honestly, some places that we understand the least. Not just because they're underexplored, it's just we literally can't quite tell what's going on tectonically and yeah. uh, volcanically with those yet. I was going to a dance party in Rio, and you were going to uh, all the unexplored parts <laughs> of the ocean. I am such a science nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. You are amazing. Mahina, how about you? I'll go to Rio, though. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would too. Um, aloha mai kako. Um, o mahina lani kawale ko inoa no o ahu mai ao. Good morning, everyone. My name is Mahina. I'm from the island of Oahu. And if I could go and sail along any coast or any place in the world with Nautilus, I mean, I don't, I would probably want to go to Namibia. Oh, Namibia. And just see, like, the clashing coast. of, like, the oh. desert when the desert meets the ocean. Like, that's just something that I really want to see. Lots of shipwrecks that over there cool. on the skeleton coast as well yeah. of Namibia. Yeah, we could mm. uh, explore that coast, get some good waves, and uh, uh, also explore some of the marine archaeology. Yeah. That would be awesome. That Thank would you, be. Ma Thank you, Mahina. Yeah. Where would you shine your light, Kukui? Oh, that's cool. Uh, oh, wow. This is awesome. Um, I would... Can you zoom in? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, I think I would try and retrace um, where Pele went with um, Kamahua Li'i hey. um, in the Mo'olelo. I'd be kind of interested to kind of like... Um, kind of do that trek in person and see what it looks like sure down there. Always, that would be awesome. Always moving in the steps of your ancestors, Kukui. It's an uh, inspiration to me, I'm sure, to all of us. So. Yes, ew. Uh, amazing. Virginia, how about you? He does have a claw. Virginia's busy admiring all these yes, awesome. Yes, I am. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm also taking a nice little still picture of mm. them. So um, but yeah, I'm Virginia, and I would... Um, uh, I'd go visit my sister in Okinawa Ooh. and conveniently on the way do some um, research on the Emperor Seamount chain. There yeah, you go. there's, there's a, it needs it. Yeah, it's, it's one of those locations where we have some information, but there's also a lot of trawling still in the area. Um, and so, you know, seeing how far that trawling is stretched and then, you know, getting some really good um, information on biology that's there. Um, and some of the spatial distributions would be really interesting. But I didn't think about that until I was like, oh, until after I thought of Okinawa. It's so. on the way. Mm -hmm. That's a that's incredible Okinawan culture, such a unique place, the southern islands of, of what's now known as Japan, but uh, have very, very ancient history of their own. And mm -hmm. I absolutely love it there. It's a beautiful part of the world. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Let's so go. that uh, anthemastus looks like it's not quite as uh, bright red as some of the ones we were seeing earlier in this dive. Is it still on screen? Right there. Oh, yeah, that's we've seen some of the light orange ones as right. well. Yeah. yeah, I think we saw those on another dive. Oh, oh great. Uh, Saka says maybe Anthemastus tahinatus, question mark. Mm, different species of Anthemastus. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> the jury is out. <laughs> <laughs> I will not correct anyone's Latin. <laughs> well, I've, I've never taken a Latin course, and I also come from the Midwest, where um, sometimes you, you you read a lot more words than you hear, and uh, so it, with unfamiliar stuff, I, I like to ask. Before we uh, hand over the controls of Evie Nautilus to Catalina Del Mar to hear where she would take mm -hmm. it, uh, interesting question about the relationship between the moon and these deep sea creatures. You know, often many of our shallow uh, marine creatures are very tuned to uh, moon phases and uh, wondering if any research has been done on, uh, I know it's so hard to get down here, it's hard to stay down, Could difficult to. zoom oh. um, a little bit up above here? Yeah, yeah. so this, this Eritogorgia mm. is actually yeah, I think uh, it's it's off of this sponge stock, so one, that's already cool. And then 
It looks like it branches. And it does. We, we have a branch. Oh, hi, Steve. Um, we've got two branches here, which is very interesting. Um, yeah. This also tells you how long this uh, sponge skeleton has been around, at right. least relatively speaking. We can't get an absolute age, but uh, this this is not a recent sponge, given the size of this Aridogorgia. Right. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. You don't see many Aridogorgias that's a uh, branch either. No, and there's a there's several corals growing off of that sponge, which is so interesting. Ah, oh, we've got another shrimp with. Um, Oh, uh, eggs. Yeah, hi. Yeah, it's pretty. Being corrected here, uh, Rodana Ridigorgia. <coughs> Apparently, some of our viewers online share we've that been seeing sense. quite a few of those. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was seeing some discussion about those a little bit uh, earlier in the chat during uh, the previous watch. Yeah. So, yeah, they're pretty spectacular. I'm a fan of those. Yeah, this is, a, this is a, another unique spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we ha I don't think we've seen many Rodana Ritogorgias this, uh, this dive. Well, let alone ones growing off a sponge. Well, yes, there's and there branching. that as well. <laughs> so cool. All right, nice find. Yeah. Thank you, for, thank you for that. Beautiful. So we may be uh, ready to get moving again and uh, see how sure. far we can get in the, last, in the next uh, 34 minutes. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Yeah, we're just a little bit south and west of the uh, Liliuokalani Ridge where we uh, started uh, explorations on this uh, expedition. Did our uh, first dive over on King George Seamount on the eastern fork of the Liliuokalani's. And we're, uh, we're heading back in that direction for our last couple of dives. So, but we're, uh, we're not going back up to uh, the uh, Liliuokalani's as far as I'm aware. We're gonna be sticking close to the uh, Northwest Hawaiian Ridge, mm -hmm. finish this off and uh, and we'll be heading back home. And uh, sunrises have been earlier. We, we've stayed on Honolulu time this entire expedition. And uh, the further west we got, the later the sun was coming up, which made it a little hard to get moving some mornings. This is weird. <laughs> oh, yeah. Looks like um, another one of those Coralomorphs, probably. Oh, maybe. Uh, probably, yeah. But, uh,. Yeah, it was right about 7.30 this morning when uh, the sun was coming up. It was a beautiful sunrise. At least as far as I could tell from my stateroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice. You've got a porthole that you can see the... Yes. Um, that's nice. Catalina, want to introduce yourself and, and tell us where you're taking Nautilus when they give you, uh, <laughs> give you the keys. Give you the keys. Hmm. Well, my name is Catalina, and I am a master's student at the University of South Florida's College of Marine Science, and I am serving as a navigator here. And I think I would take Nautilus somewhere that it's I think it's been before, which is back to the Gulf of Mexico, because I would I think it'd be really cool to explore. Um, a feature that's known it's it's the West Florida escarpment. Mm. Yeah. So it's cool, the cool. edge of the West Florida shelf, and it's been, it, from what I've read, it's supposed to be just like this really crazy cliff face that just drops off like thousands of meters. Right. Fun. And it's supposed to host some pretty like unique communities um, because of the geology of the area and uh, the combination of the. Um, I, guess, I guess it's a combination of the karst geology and like the freshwater that actually is believed to seep through the um, platform and they believe there's some pretty unique chemosynthetic communities along the escarpment and oh, wow. I think it'd be really cool oh, wow, to see that. Oh wow, that sounds fascinating. Yeah, it's supposed to be super cool. Let's go. Bob Ballard. Bob, if you're <laughs> listening, sounds like we need to get back to the Gulf eventually. Very cool. How about you, Robert? Uh, you've already been everywhere uh, in the deep <laughs> sea, but if, you, if they gave you the keys to the yeah. Nautilus, where'd you take us? Yeah, I, I have several things in mind. The, the, you're talking about Norway. That would be cool. Oh, that would yeah. be awesome. That part of the world. But what I was really hoping was we were going to get a, uh, a small submarine donated to us. Somebody had donated it, but it's kind of on hold. 
But to take that around Palau would be... Oh, funny. that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, would. it's only a 500 meter deep submarine, but it's, you oh. know, it's one of the ac acrylic spheres. Cool. So you can see That's all the way so around cool. you. That That's amazing. amazing. And that'd be so useful for mesophotic corals. Yeah. So I, I tend to like the very shallow dives where there's... Talk about the one, the Triton ones? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are not, those are really cool. <laughs> Yeah, oh, that thanks, Robert. Maybe that'll still happen someday. Mm -hmm. Would be Probably cool. In time to go to Palau. <laughs> Zach, how about you? Um, I'd really like to go to the Coral Triangle, um, over in like near the Philippines. Uh, Indonesia like, and the Philippines. Yeah, yeah Malaysia. That, that, I've always kind of dreamt about going to the, in the Coral Triangle. Just go see everything. Get my scuba diving license or certification, and just go look around and explore everything over there. Just, just for myself. Yeah, no, it's a beautiful <laughs> nice. part of the world. What? You're not even going to invite us? Come on, Zach. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you got the whole Nautilus. There's plenty of room. But also, um, if you don't mind, uh, I'd like to have a shout out to my wife. It is her birthday today. What? Happy birthday! Happy oh, birthday! Oh. So we've been together for. Um, almost 14 years this oh, year, so wow. it'll be, it's always funny to see her, me and her getting old, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's a beautiful thing. You can't say that. That's yeah, a beautiful <laughs> thing. Absolutely can. It's she, a beautiful thing. She called thing. me old man on my birthday. It makes there me you go. <laughs> I'm only 32. <laughs> you say the word and we'll all sing happy birthday in unison on uh, SBL. Yeah. You say the word. All right, go ahead and embarrass her. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. That little crab up there. It's yeah. a cute crab. Mm -hmm. He's very color coordinated. It sure is. <laughs> the anemone is a great accessory. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, what are those crabs called? A uh, decorator? Yeah, I think a homale. I think it, I think homo. Oh, horma salad. Oh, and there's a little squat next to it as well. Yep. That's so wonderful. So wonderful. Last but certainly not least, whenever whenever Amber has a second, I know she's always tuned in to our camera systems, video systems here, but cer certainly curious where you'd take Nautilus, Amber. Ooh, so my lifelong dream has always been to make the, my way down to sure. Antarctica. Oh. <laughs> I could make this also the icebreaker, that'd be great. <laughs> Well, we could convert. We can convert Nautilus. Put a little. <laughs> oh boy, that'd be, that'd be an adventure. Oh, outstanding! Yeah, so many beautiful places on our planet. So much deep ocean, shallow ocean to explore. Amazing coastline. It's a beautiful life. There are just so many beautiful, astounding places to explore still. A whole ocean and to bring people with us. I think that's really one of the most beautiful parts about this Nautilus is, you know, that we're able to bring so many people with us to the seafloor. You know, I have some of my family who watches most afternoons when we're in we're in when we're in here in the mornings, you know, they're watching and they, they send little updates and it's so wonderful to be able to bring them here with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, such a joy to share this with family, friends, colleagues, and, uh, and so many new friends that we make tuning in. We appreciate all of you. Zach, your wife's getting a lot of happy birthday wishes from all around the world. <laughs> Thank you all. Yeah. I'm pretty sure she appreciates it. She's actually listening right now. Awesome. Oh, that's Aww. wonderful. I'm glad, glad she's with us. Glad you're with us. Appreciate uh, yes. all she's doing back home. 
to allow you, all of our families, doing so much back home so that we can, uh, all of our friends and communities, chosen families, families we're mm -hmm. born into, all doing a lot so that we can be out here. Yeah, yeah. Watching our cats, helping out with the kids, <laughs> <laughs> all of the above. Uh, we have great communities back at home. Great, we really do. Great circles of loved ones who support us, and you know, kokua aku kokua mai. We help them, and they help us. Um, that's aloha. Oh, God, I love that's the concept of kokua. Yeah, that's how we thrive. It sure is. So Amber, I have a cat update to show you later. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my mom sent a picture of my tabby. Um, very, very chilled out on a, a stack of uh, towels and bath mats uh, sitting on the edge of the tub while the Roomba was run running. It's <laughs> just like, I'm going to perch here where it's cozy, and I'm not going to be bothered by that thing. <laughs> Does it ride the Roomba? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. <laughs> <laughs> they, they are not. They are not terribly fond of the Roomba. <laughs> most cats are not. Yeah, most cats. Yeah, are dogs not. either. <laughs> yeah. The Roomba. Oh, this is another beautiful boulder. So you is know the most dangerous thing about those so. vacuum cleaners is if, that you get a pet making a uh, a boo boo and you like. The vacuum cleaner spread that uh -huh. throughout. Your oh, room. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I the latest model vacuum cleaners now have detection for that. Oh, oh good. smart. Good. <laughs> yeah, I have heard about the aftermath of it yeah. like that. Spread it around. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Don't put it on the seafloor. Yeah, yeah. oh, no. not, not around our sea pigs. They don't anyway. wrap up your Bluetooth cables in the. In the <laughs> oh, that too, yeah. <laughs> Well, don't all the Thurians already kind of act as seafloor Roombas? <laughs> In a way. Um, oh, yeah, no. He still has to kind of okay. catch up a little bit, so mm -hmm. he's just flying by. All right, it's pretty. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is beautiful. And that so I wanted to say, oh, so one of the things about this ship and, and OET in general is, uh, that makes us kind of unique is that we do exploration. And in general, uh, it's hard to get science funding to do just exploration, right? Mm -hmm. So we're the exploration vehicle, not a vessel, uh, and not a research vessel, you know? Yeah, that's right. It does, yeah. do, so does make us unique. It is the only... EV out there, yeah. Yeah. So all of the others are RVs. Also doing exploration, which mm -hmm. is very rare. If you don't explore, you don't know. Exactly. That's right. Sako says bottle brush, uh, bottle brush, uh, Chrysler gorgias, and yeah, Walteria sponges. Yeah, we're seeing a few other things too. Are those? Uh, is that a primnoid back there? Yeah, we're seeing a bunch of different organisms. Um, we've got some crinoids. We've got. Um, you're right. We do have some of those um, Chrysler gorgias here, and Walteria sponges, and um, several shrimp. Um, and the um, yeah, a few generations Euro. of things. Yeah, and those crabs and such. It's, uh, you know, something that I was thinking um, of reminding viewers is that, you know, these boulders can be such important substrate for um, a lot of these these suspension feeding um, organisms because they depend on food from distant sources and therefore, you know, making sure that they're up in the current that allows them access to more food. And um, so the height, the further you are away from the bottom of the seafloor can impact the um, the strength and the amount of the current that you actually um, put yourself into, and so it's so important for these corals to start getting.
to get high. Right. Um, and mm -hmm. yeah, that's one of the reasons we think that we see those ophiroids and crinoids and basket okay. stars right. and brazingids on top of some corals as well. So, yeah, you know, there is a pattern that we're seeing of these organisms on top of, you know, high points. And, um, you know, there's, yeah, it's, it's always kind of, it's always cool to see that pattern over and over again and be reminded that, yes, actually, you know, there is a reason and that's a food availability. Yeah. Uh, so, Kukui, uh, two questions. Um, how many Niskins have we used and are they behaving today? Um, I believe they are uh, behaving today. And we have, I believe, four, I think we have two Niskins left. Okay. Um, do we want to take one over one of these dense communities? Yeah. It looks like we may have to keep moving here, but yeah, um, yeah if yeah. we if we pop over if another one, maybe yeah, we can yeah. pull one. I'll, I'll get him to pull it on there. Cool beans. Thank you. So I'm printing bigger lottery balls so that they don't slip through the fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the new one. It looks gorgeous. It does, yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, we don't have many colors. I ordered some more, but we only have... Uh, Blue, yellow, and black, so it kind of limits our... Didn't you say Dan was using them up? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's been printing storage boxes to organize our drawers and stuff. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't have a mini to do that at home. It is quite a bit better than it was. Couldn't find anything in it. It's a big jumble of... Them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Those little boxes are... <laughs> Little boxes are lifesavers sometimes, yeah. especially nice. when you're uh, working in electronics. Nice to build custom drawer organizers too. It's always hard to find just the right size and uh, and shape and pattern in the store. So just print At a one, print one reasonable yourself. Reasonable price point sometimes. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of neat. It, uh, there's a script for it, and you tell it how big the drawer is, the the, the, the overall drawer. Yep. And then it'll tell you how many. You can split it up into. Oh, nice. Yeah. Excellent. And then little features, in the, instead of like a square bottom, it has rounded corners in the bottom. So when you scoop your hand in there, the parts don't get jammed in the corner. You can scoop them out. Can we okay. zoom on this? <laughs> it's like a, like a Hammond style SCAD or something. Uh, a Hammond style? So I was playing around with one of those codes a while back, but I uh, haven't actually printed any of those yet. Uh -huh. so it's cool stuff. Yeah, 3D printing is uh, it's a lot of fun. Once, once you get the printer dialed in, <laughs> which can be yeah. a little bit of effort. <laughs> yeah. I, the one I have is a, is a Voron, and it's a build-it-yourself thing. Like, mm. It just has, you know, it has plans, but and they sell a, a parts kit, but you can't buy a completed Voron, really. Really? <laughs> yeah, I have one of those uh, older monoprice, uh, they're called 3Ps. It's the same thing as the, the old one, How. So it's it's like super basic and uh, you can customize it with some aftermarket parts. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's not yeah. too bad. You know, it's it's it's, uh, it's not the best printer, but it's it's a nice little kind of economy thing and uh, it, 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 it does work, yeah. Well, it's a very symmetric from Noah so, there. So we have a bamboo, or X1 bamboo carbon on the ship, and that's proved to be a very, very reliable and great printer. Oh, that's good. Yeah, Where we need going? reliable out here. That's a little candelabra down there, I think, is what they were pointing at. Yeah. Thanks, from Noah or bamboo? Right there below you. The size of the polyps, I have an opinion, but I will. Mm, starts from a three points. This is a bamboo. bamboo and yeah. um, it's got IDs a trident bamboo. Yes, it did. It came it came from the branching from the bottom three. And then we have a hydride or something beneath it. Maybe something like one of those tunicates. Yeah, 
Yeah, bamboo corals are just so beautiful. So I just, Thank um, you so much. I just got a word from the bridge that the jet pump went out again. Okay. So, I mean, timing's not horrible. We can probably just cover this remaining bit. Okay, like yeah. Minutes or so. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Well, At a slower like, pace. Yeah, as long as we don't go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Off too far. Yeah. <coughs> While we're slowed down, I'll, I'll say uh, aloha to my Aunt Mary Ellen and Uncle John in Tucson, Arizona, a long way from the deep ocean uh, in the deserts of southern Arizona. But I love you all, and I'm glad you're tuning in. And uh, thanks for joining us on the deep sea, deep sea travelers. It's great to, great to have you with us.